If you work with PHP, chances are you've come across a trait, an interface, or an abstract class. But what exactly are they, and when should you use each of them? A trait like this one here is a group of properties or functions for code reuse, and multiple can be added to a single class using the use keyword. An interface is a set of method signatures to enforce particular implementations in the class they're added to. So this is really good for adding structure and standardization. And an abstract class is kind of like both of them. It can contain method signatures as well as common methods, but it can't be instantiated on its own. Instead, it has to be extended by a child class. All right, let's dive in and learn a little bit more about each of these. So taking a practical approach, let's say we're building an application for something like events, so concerts or movies. And we might have a few classes to specify different kinds of events that are taking place. So we have a class for a concert, a movie, and a play. Now behind each of these, we're going to need functions and properties to give a value to each of these classes. So for a concert, we might have a bar or a restaurant, so we might have a public function that's called get menu, and it should return the menu back to us. But we might have that same functionality inside of our play as well. So instead of having to have both of these have a get menu function with the same functionality, we can abstract that out to a trait. So let's go ahead and create a new file called hasMenu.php. And traits start like any PHP file, but their main keyword begins with trait and then the name. So trait has menu. And then inside of here, we can structure this just like a class, but the methods and properties that are in it are going to be reused in multiple different classes, or at least that is the aim of a trait. So you really wouldn't want to create a trait that is only used in one particular class. This is shared methods between multiple different classes that you want to abstract down into a single location. So in our concert and our play files, we have this get menu function here. So we can just copy that into the has menu trait. And then let's scoot this over. In each of the classes that use that function, we can remove this and instead say use has menu. And we'll do the same thing for the play class. So now what we can do is whenever we create a new object from that class, we can call the methods that are inside of that trait. So it automatically pulls in whatever methods are shared between that. So just like the play, we can create a new concert object and our concert as well can use the get menu function. So both of these are using the same implementation of that function. And this works for properties as well. So let's say that we have uh, public items, which are the amount of items that are inside of this menu. So this function might return back this items. And so a concert and a play might have slightly different menus. So we can actually use the properties that are inside of this trait in a function inside both of these classes. So let's just call our public constructor. And then we can instantiate those items with something that might be more appropriate for each of these classes. So for a concert, we might have this, but for a play, we might see items on the menu like this. And so now if we go ahead and print out each of the menus for the classes that we created, we should see that they are using different items in each of them. Even though we are reusing the same method and the same property, we're changing the values stored for that item inside of each of the classes. And you can actually use more than one trait per class as well, separated by a comma. So let's say that our play and our movie might have a trait that creates assigned seating. So that might be a file called has assigned seats. And then for our movie, just like we did with the concert and the play, we can say use has assigned seats. And then for the play, we just create a comma here and give it the other trait. So now if we add in a method to our has assigned seats here, and just like the menu items, let's go ahead and create something very similar to that. 
If we go into our play class, which is using both of these traits, we can see that we have access to both the get menu and items and seats and get seats functions and properties that are provided by these two traits. So yeah, reach for a trait. If you need to abstract out common functionality between multiple classes into a singular area that you can reuse across your application. And just as a note, any properties or methods that you have in a trait should be pretty similar. You wouldn't have both like a menu and seating inside of a particular trait because that just can lead to your code getting kind of messy. The whole purpose of it is to isolate components that are reused across different classes, but that have similar functionalities or touch on similar concepts. Okay, so let's move on to interfaces. Let's get out of our two traits here and we'll keep our three classes open. So as we're building this application, we're going to want to display some kind of price back to the user for their concert, movie, or play. So for each of these classes, we should have some kind of method in here called like get price. And you might be thinking, hey, let's abstract this out to a trait like we just talked about because it's going to be reused in each of these classes. But in my particular case, I'm going to generate that price differently for each of these different event types. So for a concert, I might use something like peak pricing. For a movie, I might use just regular flat pricing per seat. And then for a play, I might use a pricing based on the level that a person is sitting at in the auditorium. So I really can't abstract these out to a trait unless I wanted to have multiple different conditionals to determine what event type I'm looking at. And then that kind of defeats the purpose of a trait in the first place. But what I want to have between all three of my classes is a guarantee that they will always have this function added in here because down the line I have some code that always calls this get price method. So if I created a new event type, I want to make sure that this get price function is in here. And that's where interfaces come in at. So we can go ahead and create one and I'll call this something like pricing contract. And like everything else, it's instantiated like a regular PHP file, but the keyword used in this instance is interface. So interface pricing contract, and it is laid out just like a class. Now I will say the convention that I'm using for these names, by the way, so how I'm uh, putting a contract suffix on this, and I put a has prefix on the two traits, that's not really required or anything like that. It's kind of just a naming convention that I've seen around and helps me differentiate what I'm looking at in a code base. Okay, so while an interface might look like a class, the only thing that I can have in it are method signatures, zero functionality. So what that means is, all right, I can say public function, get price, like we saw in our three classes here, but that's where it ends. It ends with a semicolon right there. You cannot have a function body inside of an interface. It'll throw an error, and that's not the purpose of them. The purpose of them is to just show what you want the classes that use this interface to have required in their body. So let's see that in action. We go to my concert file here, and I'm going to just remove this get price method. But let's say that we want to use this interface for this class. We use the implements keyword and then the interface name. So class concert implements pricing contract. Now we automatically see that we have an error here in PHP storm. If we roll over it, class must be declared abstract or implement the method get price. Well, we don't want an abstract class in this case, so we need to implement a get price method. And that's cool that our ID is showing this, but what happens if we actually try to instantiate this class by running the code? So we see we get back a fatal error in PHP that the class concert contains an abstract method and must be declared either abstract or implement the remaining methods. So let's go ahead and just add back in our get price method. Okay, now everything is good. We can run that again and we don't see an error. And just like our traits earlier, we can actually implement multiple interfaces in a class by using a comma. So I can just use a comma and add a new interface, and it works for as many as you want to add into a particular class. Unlike classes though, traits cannot have interfaces. So if we try to use implements on a trait, it'll throw out an error that a trait cannot implement an interface. However, a trait can be used to fulfill an interface. 
So if we removed this get price method here, just as an example from the concert class, we can see that we need to have the method get price. But if we add in that method to our trait being used here and go back, the error has cleared up because the interface was fulfilled by the trait that's being used. And then if we go ahead and remove that trait, we can see that we get back that same error. Now let's get this back to where it was and move on to our last one, which is abstract classes. So thinking about our concert, our movie, and our play classes, all of these represent something like an event. So it'd be nice to have some kind of overarching parent class for these three different events. And we could just use a standard class called like event. So we could create a new class called event. And then in each of these here, we can just say that it extends event. But the problem with this is that I would never want to actually instantiate an event in our main application. So if I was working in this code base, someone might be able to try and create a new event class, but it wouldn't be associated with any particular type like our concert movies and plays. So instead, what I'd like to do is make this an abstract class instead. And what this does is that it can only be extended by other classes. It can't be instantiated by itself. So if we go back to our main part of our application, we see that we are now getting an error back because it's trying to instantiate an abstract class. And this works kind of like a mixture between a trait and an interface. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So for each of these classes, instead of forcing the pricing contract interface on them, I can instead remove this and we have the extends event. And I can say in here that we have an abstract public function called get price. And just like an interface, it ends with no body there. This tells any classes that are extending this abstract class that that method needs to be in the body of the class. So if we were to go ahead and to remove this, we can see that we get that error back. That the class has to be declared abstract or implement the method get price. It's the exact same error that we got back when we used the interface and didn't implement that method as well. So let's go ahead and return this back to where it was. And let's go ahead and use this same extends event on the other three or the other two classes. But like a trait, we can add methods in here that are available to each of the classes that are extending this. So for every event, we might have a public function called charge card that processes the transaction. So now any instantiation of any of those child classes, like our concert object earlier, now have this charge card method on them that they can use because it was included in our abstract class. Now you might be asking, why would I use interfaces and traits then? If I can just use an abstract class that kind of does both. And the reason for that is because a class can only extend one other class. So like we saw with our play, how we have the has menu and has assigned seats interfaces in here, we can't extend another class. It's not possible in PHP. So your abstract class should contain methods and signatures that make sense for every child that extends this class. While your interfaces and your traits can be used on a per class basis, depending on what makes sense for that particular class. So how we have both our play and our movie that use the has assigned seats trait that adds in this get seats function. If you wanna make sure that both of these have that in their body, but we don't care about the concert because it doesn't have assigned seats, then we could create an interface that has that signature. So our seating contract has a public function get seats, and then we can use implements seating contract for both our movie and our play. So we are extending the event, which gives us the charge card and forces the get price into each of our models that extend that event. But only two of our classes that are extending that require a get seats function using an interface. So we can see how all three of these, the abstract class, the interface, and the traits are used together.
So I think that's about it. I hope that all made sense. So yeah, if you have any questions about this or suggestions for any new videos, please let me know in the comments or on my Twitter linked below. Thanks for watching.